Okay, Jared. So part, we're gonna go take two here. Take two. Okay. So first off, great turnout. Uh, you got teams that they get a they get a round off. Well, each uh, team gets teams, one round off. Okay. So Acid, one of the best teams here, gets round one off, and then they're probably gonna go out there and it's gonna be war. I can't wait. But let's talk about bringing the college teams in. Did everybody have the opportunity to get the Cedar Point tickets? Yeah, all the participants, yeah, they get a uh, code, QR code. All the participants get a QR code for the Cedar Point ticket on the day And the park is open, which we talked yeah, about. Yep, yep. The international yeah. staffing issues they have. They can't let people in because of COVID, and they so can't leave their country. Today, uh, go tomorrow to the park. But yeah, they're light on staff right now, but um, you know, things are open. You know, people, I know people, are, that's my wife and kids went yesterday. Oh, are they? Yeah, they went yesterday. So, so. You guys got passes? Do you get like... Yeah, yeah, they did the deal a couple years ago. We usually do them every year, you know. Do you get them? Yeah. So. Jared's a Cedar Point pass holder. I did not know that. Makes sense, though. But when you look at this great competition so far, uh, Clarkston, Michigan, you yeah. brought a couple of Michigan teams in. You got two Perrysburg teams. You got Acid, one of the top clubs in the state of Ohio. What's the ultimate goal of Streetsboro? Streetsboro. Uh, some youth teams, obviously, the Clarkston youth team. So yeah, so we want to be open up. Usually we do a lot of Ohio stuff, but we want to have teams from other states for this event. You know, we're looking to have this event every year on this weekend. We figure, you know, it's after it's a regular school's letting out. You know, it's usually after the, um, you know, Virginia Beach duels and before Disney. And you know, if we throw some freestyle maybe next year in there, who knows? You know, who knows what happens? I know Clint did a great job. You know, once I mean we talked with them when they canceled, uh, not canceled when they moved U23s. You know, out of Ohio. Out of Ohio last minute three weeks before so we were talking and he's like oh i put it on hold we're gonna be at spire and then when they moved from spire it was the last minute okay let's get it back going so we were talking months ago about it so yeah we got eight college teams coming in should be a good i'm, I'm excited to see that I'm excited to see a dude run in sprints after a match. This is the Scotty Burnett effect, I like to call it. It's the Scotty Burnett effect. we got a dude running sprints. Okay, I like that. But uh, it's Perrysburg guy. So, you know, when Clint Musser and you put your head together and then you start getting feedback and Coach Breeze and Lake Erie, they don't have those minute Bloomsburg, right, Clarion, Kent State, Cleveland State, all these, uh, Binghamton. Yeah, they don't have the budgets like all the, even other mid-majors, mid right? So they, this is really good for them, and they're getting fresh competition. And if you're Lockhaven, who had no season except for the MAC championships, this is like a gift. Right, right. When you guys put your heads together, what was Clint's vision? We'll just give the guys that time, like you said. You know, they had a plan. We're going to go to U23s and Akron, or we're going to go to Spire, right, in their backyard. And then three weeks before, you know, those guys were training. When they move it, right, the budget's come into play, you know, without having, you know, fundraisers and things this year. So... I'm like, Clint, we got a venue. We're going to have mats down. Let's get something together, bring the college guys here. You know, he was like, what can we do here? And we brought the mats down. You know, we'll do the youth in the high school in the morning, and then you guys come in the right afternoon. So, you know, they're coming in this afternoon, you know, so they can drive in and make it a one-day event, right? Bing and Bing can drive in. Clint can drive in this morning instead of coming last night to the hotel. Stay the night, and they can move the park tomorrow. So it kind of works all the way around. They're going to get some mat time. They're bringing their extra. We'll have mats down. We'll get... You know, we talked about the officials crew, got some quality officials, so they get some extra mat time. So that's, I guess, how it came came about, and um, we'll see what happens with B23s next year, and, uh, and it's a duel for that, so you can bring the whole team, right? The B23s, you might not send everyone out to Omaha or whatever. It's, uh, this is the first maskless event, yeah. the first yeah. fully open event for Cedar Point. Yeah. And do you have the whole venue? I know you didn't rent the whole venue, but are, is it just wrestling today? Yeah, no, this yeah, there's nothing going outside, so it's just us. I've never been here with it like this. Yeah. There's yeah, normally been basketball, basketball or volleyball or yeah. something going on. Right. Because yeah, it's tomorrow, so massive. Yeah. Hey, tomorrow they got a basketball tournament going on. Well, I, they're supposed to. It's supposed to be a Sunday at 30. I don't know what it's But, yeah, there's basketball tomorrow in here. So, you know, they got to turn it around, you know, and all that stuff. So. So you're always going to have hiccups. You're always going to have people mad about officiating, but so far everything seems good. Tigliano, you just said caught him at the end of the other one, right? Yeah. He's an NCAA official, right? Um, we got some new new guys. Uh, Dan Stoll, he was an Edison roster. I think he ran for Heidelberg or how Northern. I'm drawing a blank right now, but he had the 400 record. He was uh, like All-American this year, a couple weeks ago. If you know, if you saw him, you'll know him. But yes. New official, so he's getting some mat time. So. Quick question, quick question. There's a vision for the National Middle School Duels. You know, he's exceeded his vision in, in Dom D'Amelio and what Genoa does, and BTW kind of runs that event. 
It's Dom D'Amelio, though. He's the oh, core of it, right? Guy, yeah. And it has grown into an absolute monster event. His son's here. Yeah. Right? And his okay. son's called he's, he's in the shot right now, actually. His son is. But is there growth like that? Is there a future looking for growth like that in this event? We're going to see you get through this weekend and see what the feedback is. But, yeah, we have the room. Like, right, we have six down comfortably here. You know, we could dub, uh, put two, uh, 12 more down easy and then we come up here. 18 more. 18 here. So you can put 24 mats well, on almost. No, it would be, you know, it depends how we start. I mean, we could fit 18 right here comfortably and then probably two or three up there. It's 20 mats. 20 mats. But we'll see, you know. Don't want to put it too far ahead. Bigger isn't always better, right? Dom's model, exact. We'll yeah. That, right? Let's stick to the 32 teams, put 16 mats on, everybody's running. So we'll see where it goes, you know what I mean? But um, looking to keep it first weekend in June, so if it's a freestyle type of event, folks, so obviously. Jared, thank you for the time. I got to go grab all these coaches, talk to them. Good luck at, at the event. Run smooth today. I'm going to call some matches here, probably the championship match uh, in the afternoon sometime. So thanks, Jared. Thanks.